And welcome to the Empire Beat Magazine podcast hosted by Michael B. Thomas. We believe in the power of positivity and the ability of individuals to make a difference. Join us as we encounter remarkable people who have overcome challenges, spread kindness, and created positive change in their surroundings. Well, hello. Welcome to Empire Beat Magazine's podcast. And today we're going to be discussing the pros and cons of using AI as a writing tool. And for this subject, I have one of my one of my good friends who I know is really qualified to talk about this subject. And his name is Charles L. Chapman. And I've known Charles for a long time. But with that said, I'm going to let Charles introduce himself to you. And uh, Charles, I'm going to let you take it away. Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, I'm a native of L.A., California. I've been here most of my life. I'm also, I've been a teacher. Uh, I'll do that now, substitute teacher. Um, also a proofreader for a medical, biomedical company. I've done it all, basically. But I love to write, and I've been writing for a long time, since junior high, or you call middle school now, and I've said that in detail so many times, but I've written a long time. I was a sports editor of my high school newspaper, um, so I've always been involved in writing. I've now, and I'm the author of four books, possibly five. We're trying to get the fifth one out the way, and I'm not sure if we're going to discuss that. Um, also, the that I have taught writing workshops at the AC Building Library and the African American Lib- uh, Museum and Library in Oakland. Um, I was the executive director of the LA Black Book Expo for about five years, six years, depending on who you talk to. And uh, I've, like, like I said, I've known for a long time. We met at a certain event in the Inland, Inland Empire, and we've been friends ever since. Perfect. I, I understand. It's been a long time, and like I said, I, it's hard to believe how long we've known each other. I'm hoping it's 10, but I know it's, like you said, I think it's more like 20. So it, it goes back. So AI's influence on the writing process, both for creating and logistically. Are there specific aspects where you see AI most profoundly affecting your work. Uh, if you hear the noise, it's overhead. I'm under a flight path. The airport is not too far from where I live, so that's why you constantly hear all the engine noise. But I would say a, in, your artificial intelligence is here to stay. It's a tool. I, I look at it as a tool. Of course, uh, your opinion varies as far as its role with authors and writing and, and what we do. But I look at it as a tool. Um, I think I mentioned before in a, in a past interview that I used AI to describe my characters. I would type in, type in my prompt about the characters I, I, wrote, I wrote for a uh, novel I planned to publish one day, and it came up with my characters uh, perfectly, the way that I had pretty much described them. So they, they also gave me a little bit more insight about my character's motivations and also what their um their goal is so it really helps it's a tool you know, i haven't used it for poems yet because i you know that's a whole different genre all, all the self but it's funny the other day i was trying to figure find out a way to send a thank you letter to my mailing list which i haven't sent yet but i used ai to fill out the thank you letter and it was perfect it was everything i asked for so i look at ai as a tool something i can use when i'm not think of anything in the moment. I don't want to. I want to make it sound right. Um, but again, AI is always looked at as this evil contraption that's trying to take over our industry and replace us as authors. And uh, I think that's a little bit of the fear that goes into it. But I would just say we have to enjoy it for what it is right now. It's a tool. We can use it. It helps us pr- produce better content. So that's why I look at it that way. And like it's been said, if you don't uh, jump on board now, you're going to be left behind. So you might as well just enjoy it, learn it, and use it to the best of your ability without cre- without cheating. 
basically. So that's how I look at it. And it's definitely a big time saver, if nothing else. And it makes me write a whole lot better. Now I seem like I'm smart. But anyway, that's not a story. That's another story <laughs> we'll go into later. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing how it can take an average sentence and just make it into something really creative. And that would, that I would spend 15, 20 minutes or even an hour trying to come up with. You know, if you take you back to your old high school writing days and you had to do an essay, um, I have, still have nightmares about that. And I like to write. But even then, coming up with something that hasn't been said or as the word creativity jumps in, you know, it, it took a while. So now, you know, with my grandkids, it's a matter of making sure they are really writing it. Like one of my neighbors told me, her son was using words he had never used before in his life to turn in a turn in a, a, a an essay for his class. His mom made him rewrite it. You know, when's the last time you used this word ever? <laughs> you know, so and that's the way teachers are looking at it now too. So if you don't have this in your vocabulary on a day to day basis, you may not want to use it when you're trying to. Uh, Pass the exam, as you know, as a teacher, I don't know how, the, you know, maybe you can dwell into that. How does it affect you as a teacher, or has it? Well, you know, I'm, the example that you shared was a very good example, because that's what you have to look out for. I mean, students who are probably struggling with in, the English uh, core, English class, and when they turn in uh, an essay, or a written piece of work, and they come up with words, like, I know this could have been like this. Um, yeah, it makes you question that. It was something that it's like the last time I spoke about the subject um, that anytime now we publish a book, we have to put 100% uh, organically generated <laughs> to our work. And then that's something we might require the students to do. Like this is 100% organically created because when we use AI to shortcut, and they're going to use AI to shortcut, then it's not really their work. Like keep an eye. I mean, there are times when students will use AI to write essays because they want to uh, do the best to pass the class and not to have a low grade. But that's just like the same argument people have against us as authors that, well, this is not, these are not really your words because uh, if it's not your style, then people can recognize your style and they will say, oh, well, this must be AI generated. But as I was saying in a previous interview that we it's almost coming to the point, in fact, I did this during the last interview uh, for the draft for for the edited draft for my new, my next book, that I had to put 100% organically generated. So when people see it, they know it's the, the whole book was written by me. It's not AI, nothing to do with AI. Uh, no one mm-hmm. did cover for AI for the artwork. That's a good friend of mine did that. But I find that's the same criticism that students are going to have to face because they don't ever have a classroom and a student turns in a paper and I recognize this student's writing style. And they're like, you mentioned that they put in big words that you know they, they don't use these words mm-hmm. on a daily basis. Then that will make me a little bit suspect, the same kind of suspicion that readers will have of us as authors when they see our books and they know that's not the, this kind of story write, we, we write or the characters we write in such great detail. So we have to be, always be on guard for that. Myself as a teacher, I have to be on guard for students who will try to shortcut and use AI to write an essay so they can pass, or uh-huh. myself as an author, I have to make sure that I let the readers know when they buy my books that it's 100% organically generated and not anything produced by AI. You know, and that's amazing. I wonder how many authors are going to follow suit. I would say maybe 10%. At the most, <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I was trying to be generous, <laughs> but I see it all the time, and it, that's not happening. So I think the best you can hope for is say was uh, find out who the who the who they're quoting and sort of put that in somewhere as a citation. But as far as people putting in 
get, you know, generated by AI and to help me 90% of the time, that's not going to work. I mean, it's just realistically, you just have to make sure in, in your mind that you're doing the right thing. You know, it's all up to you, how you feel about yourself. There's so, and, many, there's so many authors and there's so many books out now that it's hard to keep track unless you're a, a bigger name. Like someone say, Michael Conley is not going to produce anything AI with his Bosch novels, not at all, because mm -hmm. everyone knows his track record or James Patterson. But someone, like say myself, who's trying, who's really uh, on a certain level, they're, they're going to really think twice before they look at my name, book, buying that book because they may, may imagine that. But these are not really his words. I'm not really familiar with this author, so this may be an AI generated book. This book is too well written. This, he can't he can't write that. But I would, yeah, you know. But lucky for me, I have a track record of uh, written work. So people, if they want to take a look, they can easily find it and easily write the past articles I've written for newspapers and magazines. But for someone who's starting out, a new author, and I count new authors are teaching writing workshops yearly. Um, they would say that, okay, I'm kind of suspicious of this new guy because this new person just uh, is writing a, this, this book is too well written. I have to check and see his AI, which you never really can. But uh, that that's kind of suspicion that I would look at a student when they turn up essay and it's like, oh, I don't think he wrote this dog. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and especially, if, especially if you've known this person from the past, and they probably average a D, a D in English. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're writing uh, uh, stellar books with with with, a, with stellar thoughts and, and stellar poise, prose, and, and everything else. It's uh, you sort of think in the back of your mind, you know, where'd this come from? Right. Yeah. They're, they're quoting closely to James Baldwin, written like, okay, this person is not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to think, right? So I've read your work in the past. I would just say, you know. Yeah. It's just and, like and, and, um, like I said, so only if you look at it only as a tool to help you improve your writing, that's one thing. But to use it as a shortcut to get ahead of, to get ahead of line while the other authors are trying to grind and get their work out there, then it's not really the best idea. Do you use AI for checking your grammar, for editing, or what are your favorite tools that you would use AI for, if you did? Uh, let's see. I think Chat GPT is what I use now. Okay. And the different versions of Chat GPT. I think they're in version four right now. Yeah, they have a pro version now. Yeah, pro version. I, yeah, where I'm using like the basic version because I three point five. Yeah, I'm using the basic version so I can just mm -hmm. kind of because I like the right. I know people use chat GPT for art, and that's cool, but I'm just using it for uh, writing and for typing up suggestions for characters, for stories, or like you said, editing. Um, if I, I'm going to edit, it's probably articles. Um, if I'm asked to write an article for a newspaper or magazine that I'm going to submit, I will use that for that, that purpose. But uh, other mm -hmm. than that, I would just say, you know, um, that's all we use it for. Perfect. I think that's what most people are using for, use it for now, and I think it's that's why it's so popular. You know, if you don't know what Chat GPT is now, you're under a rock somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, just just to, as an end note, looking forward, how do you envision a future collaboration between writers and AI? What strategies or approaches do you think writers can employ to harness the benefits of AI while preserving the distinct human touch in their work? That's a big one. <laughs> good question. Good question. Let me see if I can I'll break this down. I would say when I worked for that biomedical company years ago, they had a, I was under uh, the impression that I was, uh, I was a temp worker until they installed a proofreading machine, proofreading software into the system. And of course, I think I probably said the last time that they didn't, when they installed it, it didn't come out right. The first version did not come out right. So I had stayed a little longer than I had planned to. I was going to be there for like one or two years, one of staying like six, <laughs> you know, or eight. Uh -huh. um, 
which is good, which is good because they, they paid well. But I will just say that with technology the way it is now, AI is definitely a tool that we mentioned is here to stay. And it's going to be here to stay in the, in the world of literature because it's so many, I mean, word, words are so easy to change and manipulate and whatever that you want to use them for. So having a software like artificial intelligence do the writing for you. And that's basically what is the heart of the argument is all this is that how many are, le are legit writers, legit authors, and how many are using the software to help them get ahead, to get in front of the line, to become a published author. Uh, I, I, um, yeah. So I, I just say that um, that's really the argument here is that do you use AI to become a published author on your own or do you use AI because you saw someone become a bestseller and you say, I can do that, I can do that. All I do is go into my AI program where it be chat GPT or Bing or whatever and produce this nonfiction or fictional book and guess what, I'm in front of the line. But it really doesn't work that way. It should never work that way. Because for all the readers, appreciate our hard work in doing the research and not to say that we can't use AI for research. We definitely I plan to use AI for research, which will help be a good time waste because I use the internet already. But to use that as research as for other tools to help us produce a better story or better nonfiction book, rather than for that technology to do the work for us because readers like as we mentioned before, readers will they will now start to question us whether or not we actually wrote the book or not. And I think for someone like myself who's been writing for a long time, I want to make sure that people understand I have a track record. I produce a lot of works on my own, and the words that I write are my words, and they're not generated by a computer, but really by my own hands. I love your answer on this, too. Now, let's get back to you a little bit, and for people who don't know, uh, give us a little rundown on your latest books and what's coming out. What do we have to look forward to in your future? Okay, so let me start with the most recent novel, <laughs> my first one. Um, it's, it's a young adult book called Relay. It's set in the San Fernando Valley, mostly a school called Appleton High School. A high, a, the, the varsity track team, they're all seniors. This is their last shot to win a state championship. They've been close before, but now this is the last chance to win a state championship they're facing a rival school uh, a team that from some other place that they don't even they don't even know each other but this team is getting a lot of attention on their own because they're winning races as well so the two teams are in the collision course to meet for uh challenge to challenge for the state championship meanwhile the team itself has to deal with tragedy, it has to deal with uh, a few issues of love and fitting in and things like that. Um, something happens to one of the team members that they have to allow another team member or someone from a lower squad to join them and how they have to fit in and how the varsity has to work together as a team because this new member is from a different race so they have to learn how to work together and they do uh, but they also have their own personal issues too because they're seniors one has an issue of romance the other one has an issue of identity in school a ways where really what he's being taught in college the other one is basically what's he going to do with his future because something happens to him that he has to deal with start considering his future down the line and of course, the coach has an interest. He's an interesting plot line too, where he has to deal with um, something in his past that he has to re reconcile and le learn to deal with. He's always being pointed out for what he did in his past. So it's a very interesting novel. I um, hope that people will support it. You can. It's on Amazon. It is on Barnes Noble's website too. All you gotta do is order the book, and you will have 
have a copy relay at your um at your door. <laughs> so the the one before that and this one is an anthology of short stories and poems that I've written. It's uh, Storm on South Central. And Storm on South Central has interesting stories, I'd say engaging stories and uh, interesting poems. And some of the short stories are uh, Father's Day, which is a young boy going to see his father. Well, something mysterious happened to his father, so he's going to see him. Or a story like The Party, which that turns out to be a celebration, and then all of a sudden it turns out to be a tragic event. The title of the book, Storm of South Central, about a storm that appears out of nowhere and changes the whole community, if not every everywhere else. Um, also, very interesting, funny stories like Do Fries Go With That Snake, right? It's a variation of that song, Do Fries Go With That Shake, by George Clinton, but it's... I wrote that same year, and I was like, I'm gonna have fun with this, right? It's mm -hmm. really fun with it. So I like to write funny stories like that. The same kind of comedic uh, story can be in the do, Don't Judge a Bum By, in which you have somebody complaining about women, a certain type of women, and uh, he meets this person on the rail line going home, and this person may or may not be who, who they seem to be. You have to read to find out. And also, last night at the club, in which there's a little bit of history of, of uh, South LA before all the nightclubs, like the hotels used to be there, right there, the Dunbar and all the rest. But this is a different picture on a nightclub in the middle of South Central Avenue um, back in the 19, late 1920s. And uh, how did that? How does this person arrive at that place? You have to find out for yourself. So, okay. you know, uh, along with the short stories. I may miss one or two, that's okay. Uh, there are poems, too, that, that are in there that you may like. So I hope that the public will enjoy reading the book. Uh, that's all. It's also found on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. All you got to do is log in and look up the book, type it up, and so you want to okay. read um, I'm going to link your website and your information in your bio. So people can go there and take a good long look and even, you know, if they have any questions for you, they can shoot you an email. Yeah. And, you know, I know you're the kind of person that's always there to help. And now with the, how I you know, always in how I like to end the podcast is do you have any advice for up and coming writers or creatives? That's one. And the second part of this question is, is there anything you'd like to add to the conversation that we might have missed? Okay. Uh, I do want to say, just before I ask those questions, is that I've also written two books. One book may not be available, but you can probably order it on Amazon, which is The Depths of My Soul. That was one that's been out for a long time, and I think that's out of stock now, but give it a try. And the current one is The Voices of South Central. It's mostly poems, uh, which talk about the community and love and all the other subjects uh, social commentary they like to say so it's on my website and uh, mm -hmm. if you go to charleslchapman.com forward slash books you'll be able to see the books and also the links to what Mike was talking about as far as Amazon and Barnes and Noble so if you go there and look under the book section you'll find everything all um, my written works there so now, to answer your question, I didn't mean to be so long-winded, but I would like to say that, um, you know, my advice to up-and-coming authors is that all you have to do is um, write. <laughs> I mean, every author out there, big or small, uh, especially the uh, well, best-selling authors, will always say to up-and-coming authors, write. Just write. Do your research. Um, read. Definitely read a lot because you'll gain a, a lot of ideas from reading. Get as many sources as you can. Read. Um, I, I grew up and took a lot of English courses when I was in college, so I, I read a lot there, so I get most of my ideas from what I've read. Um, but read the Shakespeare, read everything that you can because once you do, it will inspire you to become an author. And I know today, these days and times, we're all focused on visual media, but people still like to read. Uh, and even though I know the trends to write 
series where it's uh, Harry Potter or the Lord of the Rings or whatever. If that's what you want to do, you can create a world and just write a series. Or you want to write a one-off story, you can do that too. So you can just read, write, get as much information as you can, get, do as much research as you can, and that will help you in your writing journey. A lot of authors or would-be authors who come to the workshops, I tell them the same thing as far as marketing, and as far as getting your work out there and uh, a, a, a venue like this uh, is something that you can also use to help promote yourself as an author. So take the chance and get, get started writing. All right, Charles, I want to thank you for this conversation. Uh, like, it, like I said, we're, you're uh, one of my favorite guests and you will definitely be back again because we have so much we still need to cover. But with that said, I'm going to leave leave this podcast now, and I just want to let people know to look out for our next coming event. I'm trying to do these weekly now, so I'd appreciate all the support I could get. And once again, thanks for uh, listening in. And Charles, have a great day. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to the Empire Beat Magazine podcast. And if you enjoyed today's episode... We kindly ask you to subscribe and share it with your friends and family. Until next time, stay inspired, stay positive, stay curious, stay strong and we'll catch you on the next episode.